guys, it's Bonnie, back with another video. So, as you guys may have noticed, um, with how I do my seasonal jobs and my kind of nomadic life I'm living, I have fairly long periods of time where I don't work. So right now, I am in a period of five weeks where I am not working. My last day at my seasonal job was April 4th, and then I don't begin my new job until... May 20th, so that's actually six weeks. That's six full weeks of not working. So you may be wondering, well, how on earth do I pay my bills, keep feeding myself, you know, get to my job via plane, you know, how do I do all these things while I'm not working right now? So that was something I wanted to talk about. So first, probably the most important thing I'm going to mention is you have to have a budget. So if you don't know how much you're spending, if you don't know how much you need, if you don't know where your money's going, it's not going to last you. I don't care how much money you have saved, if you don't have a budget, you don't know how long it's going to last you, and it's just really hard to make any plans. So I know they're boring, I know they kind of suck, but you got to have some kind of budget. Um, how much do you anticipate needing for food, if you have a car, how much do you need for gas, uh, make sure you budget it all of your bills that will be um, coming until you get your first check from your job. That's something else you have to keep in mind is that your first day at your job, you're not going to have money. So for me, even though my job ended April 4th, I can probably count on getting a pay my last paycheck will probably be somewhere around April 20th, but then that has to last me until June 1st, which is my first payday. So that's still about a six week time frame, but I will be getting pay after I've quit my job and then won't get pay until I have started my new job for a couple weeks. So it's just something you have to keep in mind is when are you getting paid and just figure out a budget, figure out how much money do you need. So the second thing is just figuring out any little way you can cut expenses. So for me that has been things like when I can find free food, even if it's just a little snack, I pick it up. So for example, Today I went to Beaver Creek to get my check. They have these handy dandy granola bars all over the mountain. And yeah, I mean, it's just a granola bar. But if I pick up two of those every time I go, that's quite a few snacks. I can take them with me on the plane. I can use them and sure, that's not going to hold me over. That's going to be all the food I eat. But little things like that will add up and will help reduce how much money you have to spend. Um, also, I've been taking the free bus in my town a lot lately. I've been on it actually almost every single day for the past week or two. Um, again, I realize this is not something that's available everywhere. It also doesn't take me everywhere. The free bus in Avon only takes me within the town of Avon. Um, and even then, it's kind of inconvenient where it takes me. It is a little bit of a struggle but whatever, it's free transportation and I've been able to get to the grocery store, to the mountain, home, um, you know, just a variety of places I need to go. It can get me to the post office and the bank, um, just things like that. And that has not cost me any money. So I have not paid anything for transportation currently. Um, I do need to pay for a Greyhound coming up, but based on the location and the time and the fact that I was only taking it to Denver, so not really that far, it's only a $20 bus ticket. So within the next month, I am planning on spending $20 on transportation. Uh, before my job ended, I had paid for both my plane ticket and my train ticket that I'm going to need in Alaska, which has reduced how much money I need to spend in this time when I don't have a job. Um, another thing I have done is I've been looking through the paper for um, things like babysitting, dog walking, dog sitting, and even just free activities. So by keeping myself busy doing these free activities, I don't feel the need to spend as much money. And sometimes you can learn something valuable that could ultimately save you money. So for example, this week, um, I think it's Friday and Saturday, maybe it was Saturday and Sunday, but two days coming up this week, there is um, a free mushroom foraging like class sort of thing going on in my town and I'll admit I am not the biggest fan of mushrooms like honestly they are probably my least favorite like herby plants food out there um but it is free food it's free education and the fact of the matter is, I know that both Colorado, which is a place I consider home, and Alaska, which is where I'm going to be this summer, 
are both very wet states in the summer, which means that they lend themselves very well to producing mushrooms. Again, mushrooms are not my favorite thing on earth, but free education and free food and the potential to, you know, continue supplying myself free food. And as I've mentioned, I want to do van life. So since I already know what berries and what um, flowers are edible that's in this area, that could be really helpful to me to also be able to add in some edible mushrooms. And again, I realize that might not be for everybody, but that is something you can do that will both provide you, um, you know, free time to be somewhere, um, free education, and then you also get yourself a free meal out of it. Another option is looking for side hustles, things like babysitting, dog walking, um, helping people move, any little thing like that. You don't need a full-time job, but honestly, about once or twice a week, I have somebody contact me either because I've messaged them on care.com or because they found me, and they're just looking for somebody who um, can babysit one night a week. Um, this definitely does depend on your area. I live in an area that is um, well known for people to come here specifically for travel, so that definitely does help me. Um, where I lived in Florida, it really was not a travel area, so if I went on care.com, I would have expected to receive um, less money per hour, and um, also the families typically wanted someone more long term, so babysitting can definitely depend on where you are. If someone's looking for something, you know, like, oh, I'm in town for this week, I need that, versus if they're looking for something more long term, so kind of consider that with your area. Another thing I've been doing that's been helping me sort of keep an income is I have been selling things. So um, basically just one item at a time I've been going through my house and selling everything because I pretty much don't need anything because I am about to start van life. So my desk, my bed, my car that could not make it to Alaska, um, a lot of clothing, um, a lot of kitchenware, a lot of furniture, just like all these little random things that have been really adding up to like a couple hundred dollars, I got over a thousand dollars for my car, like all these things when you add up can really help you, especially if you know, you only need money for a short period of time. Another thing I've done, which helps when you don't have a huge income coming in, is I have found ways to reduce my expenses. So my lease ends May 1st, which means I paid my last month rent April 1st, and like I said, my last day of work was April 4th. So with that last paycheck I get, I do not have to put any money in rent. Um, I will still need to pay my roommate the last month's utilities, you know, like my half that I pay because we split that. Um, I also sold my car the day before car insurance was due, which cut out car insurance and gas, also cut out my um, occasional oil changes and things like that that were going towards the car. Um, I have also um, just been, you know, as I've mentioned, food, just been really working on finding ways to either get free food or just looking for sales, looking for little ways I can reduce expenses in food. So, for example, because I've put myself on such a tight budget, as much as I really do prefer organic food, I have decided that for the time being, I am not going to buy organic milk. Um, I am still trying to buy organic fruits and veggies, but my justification is that at least where I live in Colorado, um, organic milk is pretty much twice the price of non-organic milk and I just can't justify that right now. Again, I agree it's totally better and uh, when I have the monies for it, I prefer to get non to get organic milk, but the fact of the matter is I cannot justify spending an extra $2.50, $3 a gallon right now when I know I need to save the money. So little things like that where it's like if you can save the money, you should. Also, I have been looking at just doing uh, challenging myself to no spend days so right now I am two days into no spending last time I managed to go three days and then I spent $18 so my goal is to go at least four days and then spend less than $18 so if I go four days and then spend $17.50 awesome and then I will challenge myself to try to go longer and spend less um, I do want to point out that I have all of my bills automated, so when I say no spend challenge, I'm talking about physically going to a store and buying something that is not a bill, since my bills are automated, you know, um, my 
credit cards, my student loans, my phone bill, like since those are automated, I'm not counting those, I'm not, you know, doing anything to spend that money, that money is just kind of disappearing and I, you know, I'm aware it's disappearing, but that's not something where I'm going out of my way to spend the money. So that's how I do my no spend challenge. You are more than welcome to do it however you want, but that's something I found has really helped me with reducing how much money I'm spending. Um, another thing has been just to find ways to get what I want, either cheap or free. So for example, I know that when I take the Greyhound and then take the bus or and then take the plane the next day, I'm going to really want a book. So I have been looking at the little free libraries in my town. Uh, they don't have anything I want quite yet, but I've decided I'm going to check it a few more times and then if I don't see a book that I think I will be interested in enough to read for my plane and, and uh, bus ride, then I will go to the thrift store. I know that the thrift store sells books for 50 cents a piece, so I'm going to be able to save a, a substantial amount of, book, of money on a book even if I bought it like used on eBay. So little things like that. Um, disclaimer, if you are going to use a little free library, it's recommended that you give a book and take a book. Um, I do not have any books right now to give, but I don't have any books to give right now because I have literally donated all the books I own to the little free library in my town. Over the last year I've probably given them somewhere between 30 and 50 books, so I do not feel bad at all going in there and taking out my first book from there. However, that's just something I wanted to point out because they kind of are built on the honor system. If everybody goes and just takes a book out of those and doesn't replenish them, then they will disappear and that kind of defeats the purpose. So um, if you are looking at a little free library or other thing of that matter, just kind of keep in mind that they really do need your donations in order to keep going. Um, so just, yeah, if you've got some books that you don't need, throw them in there and look and see what they got. Maybe you'll find some awesome books. Um, and just little things like that. So if you guys have any more tips on how you either save money, you know, budget while you are not working, or if you have any tips on how you can make money while you're not looking for a like full-time regular job, leave those in the comment box below. Also hit that like and subscribe button. I'll talk to you again soon.